Hello and welcome everyone and welcome to- I'm Maddles and this is game 3. I really messed up my intro there. I don't know how I managed to do it so badly. I've said it at least eight, 900 times. Like minimum, probably over a thousand. Yet it just didn't work correctly. I have no clue why. I saw a funny picture on the internet of ducks chasing a man on a bicycle. But that's beside the point. Let's talk about where we are and what we're doing. This is game three of the best of three. It's from the Zotac Cup. It is a PvP, so let's introduce these two players. In the top right, we do, of course, have the pink Protoss player. It is Fargo, who is going to be up against the yellow Protoss in the lower left. Sage, so far, these two have given us the delight of watching some very varied, some very funny, and some very tense Protoss v Protoss games. Game one, they DT rushed each other. That is always comical when you see two people DT rush. Unfortunately for Sage though, Fargo, he made the robotic facility thinking I might need an observer and had some detection, which meant that he lost. That he won rather, Sage lost. Game two, we're on Whirlwind, which is massive. Sage boldly, bravely, in what can only be described as like walking straight through the middle of a gunfight, he meant Nexus first in PvP. It paid off though, because he held off some 2-gate into 4-gate aggression out of Fargo, very convincingly. He chucked, he, there was a little dodgy patch when he lost his cannons, but then he just piled on more cannons, piled on more units, and it was all good. And as a result, Fargo GG'd out because one base against an opponent who's been two base for ages equals bad times and game losing. So, we make it to game three, which is great news for us. These two, probably not so happy it got to game three, probably wanted it to be a 2-0. Every player wants it to be a 2-0. But for us, for the viewers, for me, the caster, it's good news because we get to see what they're going to do in a third game. I'm trying to think what we could have. We haven't got a proxy 2 gate yet, so that's probably the only more extreme thing we could have seen as opposed to a DT rush. We've seen a 4 gate technically, well, it's a 2 gate into a 4 gate from Fargo. Maybe we're going to see them go 3 gate robo, 1 gate robo. They're all possibilities. They're all things that would be joyful for us. And it's all just part of as we get a display. We see Sage yet again getting down that second gas slightly later than Fargo did. We saw this. This is different to what we saw actually in game one, but similar to what we saw in game two. The Sage got the second. The sec. The Fargo rather got the second gas sooner. It's not a big difference though. Nowhere near as big of a difference as we saw in game one between the two of them. So all in all, this means they're pretty level at the moment. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Nothing too extraordinary, so to speak. And well. Let me just remind everyone that if you enjoy my videos, please make sure that you do like them. Please make sure that you do subscribe. And do make sure that you send me a Twitter message, a tweet, because that's just fun. And I like tweets. Let me know what you think of my cast and things like that, and of the games I do, because it's fun to talk about things. And I'm always tweeting about StarCraft. Like, it's pretty much the only thing I tweet about. So, like, at the GSL, in the up and down games last week, or whenever this video is released, whenever the GSL up and down games were happening, I was tweeting loads, I was like, GSL, ah, they're going to win, they're going to lose, and generally just getting hyperactive, and you can join in on that fun. But anyway, enough about Twitter, we're here for StarCraft, not Twitter, Robo Bay is coming down. I like my predictive powers there, I reckon I was like, it be, could be a 2-gate or a 1-gate Robo. And there we go, 1-gate Robo from both of them. They like mimicking each other, There's a 2nd gateway getting thrown down for both of them as well. Their builds are so similar. Third gateway though out of Fargo. As I say, their builds are similar. They deviate from each other. It's just to make me look silly. It's secretly a conspiracy of all players against all casters to make us look as silly as they can. It may have something to do with their greater understanding of the game. It may have something to do with just making the viewers laugh at us or rage at us or anything. But yeah, so far, two, three gate robo against two gate robo. That ultimately means that the Sage isn't going to be able to spend as much money. means he's got the option to expand should he want to. And they are in cross spawn positions, so the resupply distance is a little bit longer. Difference coming out straight away though, I'm seeing the Immortal from Sage compared to the Observer followed by War Prism for Fargo. So Fargo clearly going for some more aggression. And three gate robo, you're not going to be able to expand comfortably with this. It's really quite an aggressive build. We do have warp gate tech done, but there we go. I was just going to say we don't have the gateways warping in it quite yet, but that's fine. We meanwhile these observers moving out quite nicely. We do have this single stalker for Fargo pushing back this probe from Sage, but Sage 
Uh, Fargo Brothers Observer coming over. He's got the Watchtower. This War Prism not going to get detected at all. And with the three Zealots, could be pretty strong. We've got a good amount of forces here for Sage. But they're all defending the ramp. We've got the Robotics Bay now as well. So teching up to Colossi. No sign of an expansion yet. Although this probe happily sitting there. Perhaps preparing for it. We'll wait and see. The Observer v Observer action gets taken out. And of course without that Observer, Fargo has no clue that this natural base could potentially be about to go down. Having said that though, the War Prism is on its route on its way out now for Sage, who still has no clue this War Prism's on its way through. We've got still good movement, we've got some units coming across the map for Fargo at the moment. So both of these two players are really going at each other, and now we've got two additional gateways coming on from Sage, so not gonna expand it would seem, but instead gonna go up to four gate Colossus tech. So obviously um, he could get Colossi out, he could also get the um, Gravatic Drive in order to allow War Prisms to move quicker. But and Gravatic Drive it is going to be. So these two, I don't know if they're copying each other. But they're both doing exceptionally similar builds. The main difference being that there's an immortal out for Sage where there isn't for Fargo. This War Prism for Fargo though seems to have gone unbeknown. It's just there ready for the two prong attack. So Fargo, he's gonna push in the front, that's what all these units are for. Then drop in the mineral line most likely to try and pick off the economy. It's gonna be very effective and Sage is gonna have to do an incredible job of trying to defend all of this because it really could be pretty tough. But as we can see the drop has already come in a bit preemptively and that has of course forced all the units back from the ramp. Fargo now looking to move up but instead Pull straight away back, seeing what's out. Sees that there are the two immortals. With the war prism there, you can use the pick up and drop play in order to keep them as alive for as long as possible. And with that, it seems that Fargo is happy to pull back and doesn't actually want to engage for the moment. There's this single pylon down here as well for Sage. It hasn't been utilized yet. There's also this zealot just chilling down in the bottom there. We also have, of course, the first Colossus about to hit the field. That's good news. We do have, as we can see, the Observer getting good information, sees the Robotics Bay, sees the more Immortals, or something is getting Chrono boosted out. It's likely to be an Immortal when you've already seen the War Prism. Here, though, for Sage, his own War Prism, happily moving around, ready to come and pick up these Immortals, going to take them out. The expansion on its way now as well for the Yellow Protoss player. No expansion yet for Fargo. He has, he's getting towards the amount of money he needs for it. He's queued up the Colossus already behind. They're both looking quite comfortable on the work account, a little oversaturated as we can see, but that's fine for the lovely Sage because, well, he's going to be able to move quite a lot of these down to his natural a lot sooner than Fargo will because Fargo still showing no sign that he wants to take it. He has moved his army down to the low ground in order to defend the bottom ram so he doesn't have to retake that position, so that's good news. Extended Thermal Lance now on its way out for Fargo. That has not been researched yet yet for Sage. So Sage obviously is going to have to start thinking, hang on, I'm going to need that extended thermal lines. Does have the War Prism speed upgrade. All of Fargo's army is a little bit out of position, so this drop could be very nice. To focusing down on the robotic facility, sees the Stalkers and the rest of the units coming forward, so we'll have to consider picking up these Immortals ASAP, and one actually gets trapped with some lovely force fields there from Fargo. That was very effective. The Stalkers now coming under with the sentries there as well. If the War Prism gets taken down as it does there, that is a big loss for Sage. Very much an oversight leaving it there rather than pulling it back. And as we can see, that was a lot of resources lost. Two Immortals and a War Prism taken down. Really does not put Sage in a good spot. Fargo with a lot more army. 35 more army supply than that of his opponent. And as a result, with these warpins, he's in a great position. Fargo's extended thermal lance is nearly done as well. He has the one Colossus out at the moment. There is the third Colossus about... Or the, the War Prism about to pop out for Sage. He's got the two Colossi there as well. But with the extended thermal lance, obviously Fargo's going to be in a nice spot. With those two immortals, he's going to be in an even better spot. But Sage Observer does have all the information required for the time being. The natural has finished, so that cannot get cancelled, which means that this is almost certainly going to go down unless by some miracle Sage holds. But as we can see, the Warpin's coming down. The second Colossus is about to join the main army for, Sa uh, for Fargo. And Sage is definitely going to struggle without that extended thermal lance, which is still 30 seconds away. So as we can see, this Colossus just happily starting to pick off. Should any of the army move forward, this Colossus can micro stay down the cliff to safety, so that's fine. We do, of course, have a lot of Zealots here. Picking off this natural base is a big loss anyway, because Fargo, he's got to really know that if he picks that off, he's going to be ahead, because this is a lot of resource invested by Sage. So he does some good damage. As we can see, it's nice little bit of Colossi micro coming down from Sage, though. Pulling them forward, pushing them back, uh, pulling them back, pushing them forward in order to get some shots off on this army. But having taken down that natural base, 
Fargo happy to move back, happy to pull in a bit of a retreat because all in all, everything's fine for him. He's done the damage he needed to do. He's leveled things out in terms of the economy. So as a result, come back and enjoy the fact that my army is bigger than yours. This war prism yet again getting caught a little bit out of position. Does have speed done though, so will be able to run back as fast as he can. Fargo now taking his own natural, knowing that he's going to be ahead of his opponent in terms of army size due to seeing the early nexus from Sage. And of course, Sage now going to really be struggling. He's going to have to start his own nexus. He's cut all other production, so there we go. It does get started. But, well, this Zealot harassment is not going to get too much achieved due to the fact that the Colossus is there, that all of the army is being pulled back now. We've got Fargo here with a few units, but unfortunately not pulling all the way back. And we are now going to see these Zealots drop into the main mineral line and deal a good amount of damage to the probes, which have to get pulled very quickly. It may not do too much, but as long as this War Prism doesn't get taken out like the last, that's fine. We see Sage is now supply blocked, though. One of his pylons must have got taken down somewhere. And... Well, he's just got the three Colossi out, he's happily sitting on an equal Colossi count. Stalker count slightly higher for Sage, but the Immortals and Zella count much higher for Fargo. His natural base near completion when Sage is, is only halfway done to being recomplete after being taken down. So, I definitely call this game in Fargo's favour at the moment. Neither player... Actually, I think both players are equal on upgrades. The only upgrade difference is that Fargo doesn't have the gravatic drive for warp prisms. Sage now getting up his second robotic facility. Going to be able to produce a lot more things out of that then. Going to try and catch up with the production because as we can see, 20, ar 20 army supply is quite a lot. It's going to make a big difference, especially in a mirror matchup. It's very big. The zealot count is very high though for Fargo, so I guess you could argue that isn't quite as beneficial because they can get kited backwards. But straight away, Fargo moving forward, getting some good damage done. We can see the army supply slowly dropping. Sage having lost quite a lot more than that of his opponent. But yet still more drops going on. Yet still more aggression on the cards for, Far for Sage. And that means Fargo is going to be forced to come and engage. Because we can see only seven harvesters left after that zealot harass. So all in all, this is pretty all in now for Fargo. He's got to kill his opponent. Otherwise... He's lost. He just can't come back from having only seven harvesters, especially when they're still not mining. They are being pulled down here. So up comes Fargo for a last ditch effort. Attacking the choke is the worst place he could be. We've got some force wheels trying to come down. Zelda on Zelda action. The Colossi count is a lot higher though for Sage. One has now been taken out. The Colossi for Fargo going down two at once. The third one falls and with that, the game is over. And of course, Sage will take the 2-1 victory. There is nothing Fargo can do here. And there is the GG. And of course, we see Sage, as I said, go 2-1 in this best of three. So great play there, and a real back and forth. It seemed quite passive, that game, but it would have been very tense to be playing it, as I'm sure you all know. Anyway, remember, like the video, leave a cool comment, and subscribe. I will catch you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye for now.